How do you feel about everybody hating you? Not everybody, but so many people. <laughs> I don't love it, but I also do love it. It's both. Because it's people you don't know. Most yeah, I don't know, yeah. It, what's the difference between people you don't know hating you? Do you get joy out of that? Yeah, especially when I'm trolling or like being a heel. Right. And, and then they boo you when you're healing. It's like, well, yeah, thank you. I have a thing where I think, though, like in our group, or not group, but like the cross section of like Skankfest, Bennington, yeah. uh, Tuesdays with Stories, your podcast. A lot of times people. I find on podcasts where I'm like being trolly and goofy, they take me quite serious. People are like, this guy is such a dickhead. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm kidding. That's my friend. Right. Where you're like, you're, fuck you, you it's, fucking it's, idiot. It's, I know what it is. Louis said it once where it was like, uh, it's, comics got serious too much. And now when you're like, it's com- comic, I'm joking. You're like, well, most of you don't a lot of times. Right. It's those lame fucking LA comics. And they stopped joking. So they're always making statements. So now we get judged as like, we're making statements. It's there's, so fucking lame. There's plenty of New York comics that I know, are like that. But I like the show in LA. Now, because uh, I have people yeah, literally. It's like, it's like, well, it's like yeah, that, it's like the fact that they wouldn't immediately go to joke as the first response. You know what I, I like know. doing? It, negating a comedian's like serious anger. I'm like, no, no, that's ridiculous. That's a comic. He's definitely joking. Right, right, right. <laughs> and they're like, no, they said like, no, if Trump wins, I'm leaving the country. Like, they're clearly joking. Yeah. They're, that's it's a, a bit. comedian. <laughs> they go, no, I'm not. I'm like, he's still doing it. But I get some genuine emails from people. Yeah. They're not kidding. They're like, you got to stop hanging out with Ari. He's a piece of shit. Well, maybe you got a point. I mean, people have really, you've really upset some people. But you just. It's uh, pretty funny. It's pretty care. funny. I would once in a while write back, but like, you're obsessed with me. Or like, man, have you been thinking about me for three years? That's crazy. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, somebody, every once in a while, I'll get, I mean, not every once in a while, every single day. But people are like. List sucks. I, none of these people really like him. He can't really be. He's such a. And you just want to write like, man, my all my success and friendships must really bum you out. <laughs> well, here's what it is, and it, you, I'll take it back to this. What this podcast is all about. It's like when you have a when people go like, why do you hang out with that guy? They're not actually asking the question. If they would, you might actually learn something. Like, hey, I noticed you're hanging out with him. He seems like an awful person. What is it about all these comics that hang out? They could write it off as like he's friends with Rogan, so he might hurt you. But it's it's if you ask, it's more than that. Same thing as when your friend is dating somebody that you think is shitty, right? And you're like, what do they see in them? And it's like, well, ask actually. They right. must see something. They're making your friend happy. Yeah. So there must actually be something there that you're not seeing that actually is really coming. Maybe they're just not comfortable around new people or something. It's the perfect metaphor because the reason I hang out with you is you have a great body and you suck dick well. <laughs> I'm coming for you, brother. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> What do you what do you, what's your workout? What kind of workouts you do? Yoga? Because you for a minute you were doing push ups in yoga during October or whatever yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you looked good. I'm but... doing fuck all right now, bro, and I'm I gotta lose ten more pounds, solid ten pounds. Why? Dude, I was at a... I was, let me just no, here we go. Sideways. This is supposed to be a mental health pod. I mean what what, what are we doing? Yeah. I was at uh, the pool. Uh, Joe DeRosa was there. And I was getting in. I was like, Yeah, where you got you know, we we got a place in Montauk a while a couple years ago. And he's like, Stop. And I'm like, stop what? I'm, I'm excited. He goes, no, stop doing that. And I'm like, what? He goes, with your stomach, stop. I'm like, what? He goes, stop sucking it in. <laughs> I was like, oh, poor Joe. No, this is my stomach, dude. <laughs> yeah, how do you have, because you, you eat pretty well, but you drink beer. I got an occasional salad. Yeah, I drink beer. But if I get too fat, I switch from beer to like liquor. Right. Hey, you look all right. And you got good genes. Do you feel good about the genes? Yeah. I, yeah. They got every, They have a surprising amount of Holocaust survivors live to a hundred. And you think that's because of the trauma? No, I think it's because uh, a diet low in trans fats really goes a long way, even for a couple of years. You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, seriously, do you think there is studies of this? Because no, there, are, there are, uh, that part is true. The surprising amount of Holocaust survivors live oh, hella. Your mother is not a Holocaust survivor. No, 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 she was a supporter actually. Is that right? <laughs> match, yeah, it's a very wow. interesting match. Um, what was I just Would watching you... the other day? What? Some. No- oh, I was watching uh, Fury. Did you see that movie with Brad the Pitt? No, oh, Brad one? Pitt and Shia LaBeouf. Uh-uh. It's a tank movie, World oh, War II. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's damn good. But anyway, so your parents are survived, and your and your mother looks good. She's like kind of hot. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Oh yeah, you met her a couple times. I mean, I didn't really meet her though. You didn't actually introduce me. Well, you met her at six and I. That time. 
They oh, came back there. Did I? I mean, you were there. They were all back there and said hello. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Sorry, this isn't great radio. Let's no, it's really down. not. Let's start over. Let's get down to it. Yeah, Let's get in there. Let's talk about mental health. I'm about to talk about okay. mental health. You fuck, you're getting, you're sure you ever get somebody, up Do you ever down. get somebody going, yeah, how about happiness? Do you ever talk about happiness or just being fucked up on this podcast? No, we talk about happiness all the time. We Not talk trying about to achieve how, it, but living it. We talk about that all the time. Yeah, that's oh, okay. what we're trying to get to. And, and that's one of the things I'd like to talk about because you feel like, and we probably touched on this last time, but you feel like a very well-dispositioned guy. I never see you like furious. And when you are angry, you're kind of like ranting about something in a comedic way. Yeah, You're not a furious person. Yeah, why do you think that is? I don't know. I think maybe it's taking breaks, traveling. Uh, I feel like you spend a lot of time with friends. You have a good relationship. You have a dog. I'll tell you, it's it's mushrooms. I think helps. I you know I hate to blame it on drugs, but like you see yourself in a, in a, as a meaningless speck on the you know scale of time. But you can get there with meditation. Yeah, I know. I had a lady say like, "There's two ways: meditation and and psychedelics." And here's what you imagine: someone's at the door. Okay, someone's knocking at the door, mm -hmm. and it's someone interesting. It's going to help your life. So when they knock at the door, you can send your butler or go open the door for you if you have a butler. Or you can just open the door yourself. That's what uh, meditation is. And my response is like, I would far rather have a butler going to do that. Oh, for me. mushrooms is the butler. <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that Sam Harris talks about. My 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 spiritual hero. Who I'd like to get on the podcast sometime. Can you get his email? You got his email? I could get his email. I will not, but I could. I used to message him on Twitter, oh, but yeah. he quit Twitter, and now I have no contact anymore. We used to talk uh, a fair that, amount. Wish that was me. Um, are you on Twitter? No, I mean, I wish I lost contact with you. <laughs> Why are you friends with this guy? <laughs> That's hurtful. But he talks about this. He said, like, what the great thing about mushrooms or... Um, Acid. Yeah, DMT. what's those called? The umbrella term? Psychedelic. The great thing about psychedelics is he's like, I wouldn't have realized it's possible through meditation if it weren't for psychedelics to, like, realize this. So it's right. a shortcut to realize that. And then after you've realized it through that, then you can like, go, let me try to then. do that again. Well, because the reality is you really can't do psychedelics all the time. It, it's it's an occasional thing. It's, it, it wears you out too much. No, and it's always tempting to me to go do it sometime because of these things, but I realize I can. you can get there without the psychedelics. I don't really need that, and that's a slippery slope, it feels, for me, personally. It is. Psychedelics is a weird one, though, because it's, no one's habitual with it. No, but... For me, it's like, but it nah, goes I don't, with, I'm not afraid of getting addicted to psychedelics. I'm afraid beer. of going, well, I was fucked up, so I might as well get yeah. fucked up in other it ways. It goes with beer, it goes pot. with cigarettes, it goes with fucking weed for sure. But so do you, when you do mushrooms, like how much meditation have you done? How much Eastern philosophy have you read? Did you ever get into Watts and all these people? A little bit of Camu, the, the new, whatever they're called. Um, new Kids on the Block? Walberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donnie yeah, Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, dude, they're philosophers. <laughs> hang in tough. You yeah. got to hang in tough. So you never really got into Easter because it's always an interesting thing to me because you're a big mushrooms guy. So you I go talked out, to him Duncan you, about it. Can I finish my fucking question, yeah. you fuck? I know where you're headed. <laughs> when you go, you go out to Joshua Tree, you do mushrooms. What happens? Are you thinking? Because I would be guided by Eastern philosophy and meditation and, and, and no self and all this stuff. You're just getting there without that. Getting there without it. Yeah, you just like let yourself. I mean, you just like go. That's why I always, I just took someone on a trip on a, a, a shaman them hard. They wanted to take a hero's dose of uh, mushrooms. Okay. I was talking to her. She's had long COVID. She's got brain swelling. Can't I don't believe in long normal. COVID. I think she's full of shit. It's possible, but <laughs> she did mention that one time at a bachelorette party, they're passing around mushrooms. She took a, a cap and a stem. Whoa! And uh, she goes, "Hey, but randomly, it was the first time I didn't feel the brain swelling and the and the craziness from this mm. long COVID thing." And that's was, that's to my point. So we talked about it, and was like, "Let's fucking dose you hard." So I gave her more than I've ever taken, and. Uh, but I hit her with a bunch of like notebooks and shit to have around. You want to have notebooks around? You want to be able to have, because you're having interesting meditative thoughts. Right. So that's what I tell anybody on a mushroom trip. But so have you gotten to a place where you realize there is no cell when you're on mushrooms? Because if you haven't read this material, you're thinking like there is no Irish feel. It's just a really just a figment of thought, all your past experiences. Do you feel that way when you're... Doing yeah, if you're like oneness or something like that, I heard a real hippie Judaism way of thinking from Modi. 
it's a real Karbach, like a, this like new wave hippie Judaism. Um, it go, it's an interpretation of the passage, I am the Lord your God, I am one, mm-hmm. which means, you know, there's only one God. But yeah. he's like, no, no, no. It means oneness is you coming closer to God. Ah. B- being friends with your friend, being friends with your like neighbors, that's oneness. That is godliness. Interesting. Yeah. Well, because like, sometimes what, what they talk about a lot with um, Buddhism and meditation, all this stuff is like, um, like you're. I'm just appearing in your consciousness, and you're just appearing in my consciousness. Yeah. I mean, that's really a fascinating thing. And you realize, like, I, I've had this guy Richard Lang on who talks about having no head. Do you ever read any of his stuff? I should send you some stuff. You'd, you'd love it. But basically, you realize, like, when you're looking at me, you're conscious, you're self-conscious that you have a face, and you've seen your face in the mirror, but you really haven't seen your yeah, face. You, you see saw it. a reflection of your own face. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking to me... All these things is really who you are. You're picturing yourself as Ari Shafir. I'm from Maryland. I'm closeted homosexual, I'm a comedian. <laughs> I think that went right on the left. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm a comedian, whatever. But in reality, all you are in this moment is consciousness, which is your thoughts and this fake plant and the camera, which is now wet, and mm-hmm. me. I'm just, I am you. I tell you about my Buddhism uh, lesson. No, tell I was, me. I was in Myanmar. I stopped. Formerly this, Burma. Formerly Burma. You know how they changed the name? Why? No, I don't. Bad press. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. The, the army's like, oh, let's just change the name. They moved the capital up the middle of nowhere, away from the like Yangon or Rangoon. Renamed it Yangon. Rangoon. And then go, hey, we're uh, Myanmar now. So everybody who writes about Burma, those that search won't come up as us. That's really smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. You should change your name. Um, yeah, I should. <laughs> You're right. But anyway, I stopped in this in this small town or town, I was just walking. I got too overwhelmed with the, the cabbies. I was like, oh, I'm gonna walk. It was like an hour and a half, but I stopped in the middle of nowhere. I saw a temple. I was like, let me go in. Of doom? But it, it looked like that. It okay. looked like that. And some guy was like, saw a white, you know, an over six foot white, doesn't mm-hmm. belong there. Uh, not a tourist destination at all. And, um, and he knew some English and he was like, where are you from? I was like, United States. Like. Do you know, are you Buddhist? And I was like, no, but I'm just like, I'm just sitting here trying to be like, just like thinking. And he goes, do you want me to give you a tip on Buddhism? I'm like, sure. And he goes, it's all living in the present, which is a nice way to live. Sure. And he goes, um, so if you live in the present, he goes, uh, where are you? And I go, I'm trying, I'm like, earth? I go, no, no, for real. I'm like, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in Myanmar. <laughs> he goes, don't get hokey, just like answer the question. I'm in Myanmar in this place, I think it was, uh, it wasn't in Lay Lake. I forget. It doesn't matter what town it was. The Northeast. And, um, and he goes, uh, uh, how many friends do you have? I'm like, oh, like, hundreds. He goes, no, no, no. Right now, how many friends do you have? And I was like, oh, yeah, you, I guess. Just you. <laughs> he goes, yeah, the rest of them are in the past or in the future. Right. He goes, the only thing is present. is me and you. And he goes, so I'm like, he's like, again, where are you? I'm like, Myanmar, how many friends do you have? I'm like, one. He goes, that, that's all great. Just be accepting of what you are right now. That's nice. Well, yeah, that's like my nice. thing. I always, I talk about often on the show and in life, when you're worrying about something, you have this. You can have a moment where you're like, "What is wrong right now?" Mm-hmm. And the answer is almost always almost nothing. nothing. I'm hanging out with friends. I'm worried it's gonna. I'm gonna miss this or miss that. It's like I'm hanging out with friends. I'm in the best moment of my life. Yeah, we're comedians in New York. And half of us are fucking crying. I can't believe it when I talk to my millionaire friends and I see them literally crying. I'm in the middle of shooting a movie. I'm bawling. I'm in the middle of fucking cashing a check for $80 million. And I'm fucking crying. And I'm like, what's wrong with you guys? Enjoy it. But maybe they're emotional because they're they're feeling all these feelings. <sighs> no, they just overworked. Now, you ever cry? What makes you cry? Besides, like, looking at a hummingbird or whatever when you're high. Oh, like, nice stuff? Like, not nice stuff, you mean? When's the last time you cried? I, uh... uh Fucking Queen Latifah rocked the bells two days ago. We were on drugs? Not really. I mean, weed, but not really even a lot. What was she doing? Crushing it. Just singing? Rapping? Dude, she came out. She had to follow Method Man and Red Man, who crushed. Wow. And I mean, I love a good performance. She comes out with the fucking giant, remember this giant hat she used to wear? Yeah. You forget about her. You remember her as an actress. And this giant, cool dress that looks like a tree. And she just had a new rap, and it was all about, like, you forgot who the fuck I am. I started all this. Wow. Uh, you know, and one lyric was like, yeah, but can it lead to crossover success? They said when I did the first of my 62 film credits. 
Wow. <laughs> and it was like, damn. So I had my fucking pit vipers on, and I just put them on so I could just start crying. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, performance can get me, oh. too. I mean, I, I saw Springsteen a few months ago with my dad and wife, my pregnant wife, my pregnant dad. And Springsteen is is like my guy, and he's been, you know, he's like a father figure to me. And he comes out, and he's 73 years old. Yeah. And, you know, you've, you're so excited. And you, and you as you get older, you reflect on things of, like, the amount of time I've spent listening to this music. And when I was in high school, what it meant to me, it was like finding a person who had been reading my diary. Right. You're like, yes, this person sees it exactly the way I feel. And if it wasn't for him articulating it, I don't know if I ever would have left that town. And then he comes out, and he He's 73 and he still sounds good and hits those like first notes singing about he's, friendship. And you, I just started bawling. He's great too because he never really had massive range. He wasn't like Christina Aguilera. So he's not missing much. Same with David Byrne. He's not, he, he not uh, Bob Dylan, well, he lost it all. But like, but like, if they don't have a lot of range to begin with, they can play a long time. Yeah, I think that a lot about old rock singers, like, I mean, the band still kicks ass, but a lot of these guys could just have career like like a Johnny Cash like just singing like their stuff solo acoustic because it gives it new meaning when you're singing about time as like almost like Tom Waits that like oh, bleh, bleh. yeah if you had what's his name now singing about I wish I from the faces whatever his name is Rod Stewart Rod Stewart wish I knew now what I knew then whatever it was yeah it's like oh wow it does have more meaning now it would yeah well, anyways, it was beautiful. And then Brandy Carlisle, who I love, and I had followed from like when she was not big. I yeah. can't went saw her at Madison Square Garden, and like I had like eighth row seats, and everyone was going crazy. And she came out, and she's like so small. She's a woman, yeah. And like everyone going nuts, and to be like follow the career to be like I am part of this triumph for yeah. you is uh, it's really exciting. It's cool though because I noticed that at uh, when I saw Run DMC sing a. Uh, Peter Piper picked a pepper, whatever, at this Rock the Bells festival. Didn't get that emotional. And I'm like, why? I had this album when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So it would remind me of my childhood. But here's what I realized. There's no direct line to now. It's like I haven't really heard most of these songs, except for Walk This Way. I haven't heard really most of his songs in decades. Right. But when I heard David Byrne singing, how did I get here? I'm like, there's never been six months where I haven't heard this song played on the radio yeah. for 30-something years. Well, I think, too, and maybe you're like me and, and many people, that when you have um, whatever childhood, whether it's a trauma or just a sadness or feel disconnected or not seen or heard, whatever mm -hmm. to use millennial term terminology, it's like those movies or music, whatever your escape is, is so fucking meaningful. I'm like, this music was such a place of escape. Same with stand-up. So when you hear it, you're like, God. And it's only years later that, like, you do feel like this, like, fucking saved me or freed me. Yeah, it's crazy, too, because I'm sure you've seen this. Where people are like, hey, when I was dealing with my cancer, I was in the hospital. Your podcast, Tuesdays with Stories, where you talk about farts a lot. God, yeah, really yeah, it is through. bizarre. And you're like, I, that's not what I'm doing it for. Don't put me on this weird hero complex. No, way. I mean, I appreciate it, but no. Like, I don't accept that. No, it's it's nice. Well, that's why when I met Springsteen, I didn't try what? to say anything. Smart. I just said, I'm a tremendous fan. And he said, thanks. Because in your mind, you want to be like, oh, I fucking I wouldn't have moved here. And I'm, I'm a comedian because of you. And I'm yeah. sad. But What's he going to say at that? You just want to go. I always walk away from celebrities. You just want to go, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Big fan. It's like, it's not worth. And I always say, I'm like, if I had a year and to to write something and I had a, an English teacher as my guide, I wouldn't be able to articulate what this person meant to me. So why even You see with drunk people too, when they come at you saying like you want and they're like, Oh cool and they say it again and again and again. And you're like, I get it. But they're like, I'm not expressing it fully. And you're like, you never will, it's fine. Yeah, it's hard. Well this podcast has been the best feedback and nicest things anyone's ever said about because yeah, everyone on here is about to kill themselves. <laughs> no, well, they listen to it. it it's, they like it. It, it, yeah. it touches people to know that other people, people struggle with things. Get You know how like university, like people can be like, well, I have anxiety. So this guy talking about depression helps me realize my fucked upness. Yeah. It's probably pretty helpful. Of course. Well, that to me is like the most important thing in life. That's why I like... This podcast is different, I guess. AA is so helpful or things like this and friendships are so you just want to be oh someone else has had this and i've told this story before when i went i started having really bad panic attacks in my early 20s and i went to therapy i thought i was dying 
And I went and got a, a fucking uh, CAT scan and a heart monitor and all this crazy shit and blood tests. And then eventually I went to therapy and she was like, yeah, you have, a, you have panic disorder. And that relieved it so much just knowing like, oh, this is a thing that people get. People have had this. Oh, right. Got it. Because I thought I was dying of fucking Joe List disease. And no one had ever had this ever. So it's like so much of life is just connecting with someone being like, oh, you think that way? Perfect. I think that way. Oh, right. Oh, people have been through this. Yeah. My mom, I remember telling her when I was like in, I don't know, whatever grade, fourth grade. I was like, nobody likes me. And she was just like, (laughs) it's like, it's a stage. Everybody goes through that. Right. I see you in school. People like you. That's, that's, you're wrong, but it's, but of course you're going through this. Yeah. It's hard though. It's, it's, that's what's scary about having a kid is it's like wisdom. It, you can't. Give it to they somebody. They gotta go through it. Yeah, they gotta go through it. You gotta get your heart broken. I can't tell you like, oh, don't that chick sucks. But you gotta like, you'll fi- you gotta find out for yourself when you're seven. I know. Or Seventeen. I, I look back on my twenties and you're like, God, I could have been so much more successful and so much happy, and I could have got laid more. But it's like I wasn't able to do that. I didn't have yeah. those that wisdom that I need. I didn't get whatever guidance I needed. Yeah, it's especially like breakups where you're like, you will at some point not think about this anymore. So it's just going to be some time for you to get there. But you can't tell somebody like, hey, there's a fish in the sea. Like they don't want to hear it. It's hard. But the, uh, the good advice I got that is helpful is you just say to somebody, it is impossible to wrap your head around this right now. Mm-hmm. But at some point, you will look back on this as the best thing that ever happened to you. Change is good. That kind of shit. And then someone else, I think Johnny gets <coughs> said this oh. at point too. Bless you. Good time to promote my special. It comes out tomorrow. <laughs> What's it called? Enough for everybody. Enough for everybody. It comes out tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, 9 Central, 8 Mountain. How come 10 p.m.? I don't know. I knew you were going to criticize. You're very critical of every decision I make. Swap it. 7 p.m. in L.A. 10 p.m. is not that late Friday night. People stay up. Our fans definitely stay up. They go to 10 p.m. shows. You know, then you have 7 p.m. If you have 3 p.m. Yeah, noon in L.A. Everyone's at work. On Who in LA works? From coast to coast, everyone's working at three. You think they work? Don't you know the problem today? No Why one's do you hate hard. LA? Why are you bringing up this hate on LA? No, I mean, it's always. It was, it's actors and writers. They're not working. It's run on people not working. You're one of these people. Yeah, other people live in LA. There's also lawyers and doctors and carpenters. They're and fucking... from home. All these lawyers are working from home now. What the hell was I going to say? <laughs> I had some good point. Anyways, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. You can't wait to watch it. Watch this is the it. first one of Joe's specials I haven't seen ahead of time, so I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Where were you? You were somewhere. When you typed it? Yeah. You were on the road somewhere. I can't when, remember. When did you tape it? Uh, I don't remember. December. To answer your question from before, I don't like when, when people I know don't like me. It really bothers me. To, to go like, fuck you then. I don't care. It's like, that's not me. I, it does bother me. Even if it's like... I've done nothing wrong. It's like even an overreactor. I still feel like, come on, man. I to see you. I want to. I want to be friends. Yeah, you want. We're you want to be liked. Yeah, I want everyone to like me. Well, here's why. I think part of it is, it's hard when someone misunderstands you because when someone oh, doesn't Lord. like you, you're like, but I'm like a really good person. So it's like you feel like there's like, but there's a misunderstanding happening. Yeah, there's a misunderstanding. Here. So that's what's frustrating, I think, because you're like, well, if someone thinks I'm a bad guy. They got some bad information. They got a bad impression. So you want to be like, no, no, it's like this. Like any other thing that you're like, you're like, no, Goodfellas is good. You don't like it? We got to clarify this. It's the same kind of Yeah, we got to clarify. Like, what what do you think of me? And it's funny. I saw, I was at the Comedy Store 50th reunion, 50th anniversary party. Mm -hmm. And there were these people with these old feuds. And they seemed so silly in these like 70 year olds. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it's. this guy's still fucking everything. I'm like, no, he's ancient. What are you right. talking about? And it's like, and they're like, it's sometimes you heard about too. It's like, fuck that guy's like, why? He's like, he bumped me once. And as they're saying it out loud, they realize how dumb it is. Like, he bumped me once in 1987. Yeah, he said gotta, he had to go and then he didn't have to go. Wow, that's dumb. You got to let go of these things. There's a Buddhist yeah. thing too. When you're arguing with someone, try to imagine them 300 years from today. They're just uh, dust and shit. That's how he told me in silly. meditation to uh, uh, Vipassana how to like get rid of, while you're trying to meditate, how to get rid of sexual thoughts. Mm. Imagine that person in five years, then in 20, then in, then the worms crawling through their fucking comp- decomposing body. Yeah. Because your bonus should be gone. Or imagine them as children. Mm, that's, wow, that's hotter. That's a bigger problem. Um, what was I going to say? I had a big point, and then you, you want belched. everyone to like you. you. No, but it was before that, and then you belched, and then I decided to plug oh, yeah. the special, and the then plug. you fucking shit on the release time and date, because that's your thing. It's bad. 
It's not bad. 10 p.m. I did the last one at that time. Did very well. Yeah, you're right. What, when did you release yours? What time? Uh, 3 p.m. <laughs> Pathetic. <And> it bombed, <laughs> right? How many views? I don't know. Six point two million. <laughs> no, that's how many died in the Holocaust. I'm asking how many views <laughs> your podcast got. <laughs> well, I thought well, I like to make it an event, be in the chat, sure, watch absolutely. with the people, absolutely. and uh, you know, we'll see. It's it's really anxiety inducing. This being part of this algorithm and having to compete with the algorithm and all this shit, and it feels out of your hands. But that's actually a nice reminder. Sometimes I'm worrying, and then I'm like, it's out it's of out my of your hands. hands. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. And the real thing is, you made something. Something. That's yes. it. The rest now, this is just money, which is a real worry. But really, you made something to the best of your ability. I saw this great Rick Rubin quote, and he goes, "When you're making something like true to yourself, he's like music, whatever." He goes, "That's that's you honoring God. Hmm. That's you giving a gift to God." Because I'm doing something great. So when somebody hits you with like, "Well, this is going to cost a little more money," like, who gives a fuck? I'm trying yeah. to give a gift to God. And it's like, if people like or this demographic won't like it, it's like, <laughs> who gives a fuck? Yes, my art is a gift to God. It is. Uh, the way you talk about your no chin, and, and that's fun. And then like... Uh, I don't do a bit like that. You used to, a long time ago. Well... You get so much closer to the mic than I can. What do you mean? Because <laughs> I can't, I stop. Oh, I see. Yeah. And your nose. You ever hear this nose joke? <laughs> this guy's lighting pipes in the rain. <laughs> He's smoking pipes in the rain. Have you ever heard that? No. How good is that? Smoking pipes in the rain. Yeah, because, because the, the nose, nose is blocking <laughs> off the fire. <laughs> Matt Wayne told me that, and I fucking howled laughing. And then he had never heard the Don Rickles joke. This guy's either Jewish or an eagle. And then he was on the floor. We were both dying laughing at big nose jokes. Uh, good stuff. You got to have uh, some levity, folks. So wait. So on I've this lost two points. I had two yeah. interesting points, and they both got taken away. On this pod. Pod. What do you do? Just speak about one fucked upness, or you just talk about meditation, or what, what do you? Do? What do I do? We're halfway through. Yeah, <laughs> do I, know, but I feel like you haven't done your like. Maybe I'm wrong. This episode of Mindful Metal Jacket is brought to you by BetterHelp, folks. This, if you like, if you need, if you like this podcast, you probably need therapy. Maybe you're in therapy. I can't recommend therapy enough. This episode is brought to you by. Better help. Therapy is amazing. It helps you understand your emotions and when they might be misplaced, like how you're constantly yelling at your kids when you're actually just stressed about work. With therapy, you can see where those overwhelming feelings are coming from. Therapy helps you recognize them and process them and move on to a brighter future. Therapy has changed my whole life. I try to go once a week at least. Uh, my therapist is out of town in the month of August, which is tough. I wish I was using better help. It's just so easy to get started. Just take a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. If you need to switch therapists, you can easily do that for no additional cost, no questions asked. BetterHelp is totally online, so you don't have therapy whenever. So you can have therapy whenever and wherever works for you. Let therapy be your map with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash metal today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash metal. Betterhelp.com slash metal. You're always doing just light criticisms. You don't even realize it. You're, very, like you're not I'm good just, at being like, I'm why don't you I'm distracting you from do doing your normal podcast. Last time it was all about depression. This, I feel like we're all over the place. Just no, you're thinking of your podcast. No, I'm thinking of yours. Because this happened last time. You started hosting right away. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. I don't have a podcast anymore, so. Thank Christ. Well, when does the travel one come out? That was the best <laughs> podcast I've ever done ever. I use this as an example. It's probably coming in the next couple months. For God's sakes. No. I mean, that was the podcast. Wow, it was great. It's, it is my example of when people are like, how do we do a travel thing? I'm like, Joe List has it. It's a, it's a travel log, but while also something else is going on. I don't right. want to spoil it, but like. But, like, that carries you through this amazing, beautiful place. Now, let me ask you this, speaking of, of travel. We might have touched on this last time, but there wasn't video, and it was a long time ago. And nobody goes back to old episodes. No. You put out a podcast, they're like, well, we're not going back to I'm about to ago. take all my old episodes down of our Skeptic Tank. Why? It's just the zeitgeist changes. It's just going to get people in trouble. Said something that we didn't even, we don't right. even remember that's now illegally, socially. Yeah. But back then was totally fine. Yeah, of course. It's just like, it does no good. Um, what, where did you get the travel bone? Did that start from your family? Wait, wait, cause I'm about to have a kid and we're just like, I'm going to keep traveling and that way the kid is exposed. Were you a baby, a child going, were you, on, were you a kid that's on the knapsack, backpack, whatever Interesting. with I, the parents? I do love traveling. Well, yes. I, I would say I'm pretty like up there in terms of us comics wise. You're yeah. Pretty up there too. I'd like to think me too. Yeah, for sure. 
some of us are just like won't go anywhere. Well, some people just don't have, don't have it. it. It's they not in them. It. That mm-hmm. is not. And I, I, I t- just a quick side note. I, I talk about this a lot. Is like you tend to want other people to see things the way you do, which is why you're always criticizing. But you're like, why? I mean, my I look at my family. I'm like, they're gonna die without seeing the Eiffel Tower. And my therapist is like, they don't care. They don't want to. They don't. Yeah, they I talked to Sagal interested. about camping. He was like. Mm. They're like, not no, interested in South that. America. Yeah, they don't care. They're like, they there's care. bugs. I don't they give a don't shit. They don't care <laughs> at <laughs> like, all. Oh. Hey, guys, I'm going to go. There's a street festival. Like, oh, cool. Tell me how it is. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I'm Some like, people just don't care about the things you care about. Yeah, I'm like trying to show them photos. They're like, okay, great. Well, we got a discount at Sears the other day. It was crazy. So we were at Sal's house. We had this tradition for, um, for New Year's Eve that we got from Ecuador. You get a, a paper mache human or a big dog sometimes there's cartoons spider-man where there was one that was covid and you'd light it the fuck on fire okay on new year's eve all right at midnight and then you jump over that fire a few times oh, fun. three times also what you do is you take all your regrets and the people you're angry at write them down on a piece of paper put it in that fucking paper mache dolls the effigies pocket nice. let those go last year i like that yeah it's great so we're like let's do that every year we did it once in tahiti we just got a, a a thing of peanuts and like made a little thing. Whatever. Anyway, we're at Sal's and we made this giant effigy stuffed with fucking straw. And we're like, hey, we're all going out. If you guys want to get it, everyone's like, nah. <laughs> we're like, oh, okay. I mean, it's incredibly cool, but okay. Yeah. We we're just like, we we're just like, we can't, we can't bother anybody. They're either into it or they're not. And they're not. So. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. Like people, I, I have family members, the people just, they just don't get in the ocean. They're not interested. Well, your, like, story a of, your story of, uh, Cutting back from Brazil, I was like, we had steak in Brazil to your family. Yeah. Like, oh, we had that uh, Brazilian steakhouse on that Disney cruise. The Disney cruise wasn't that great. And I was in like, Peru. <sighs> you're okay. just kind of like, all right, but yeah, you have to accept, and that's part of my. Ex- I have to yeah. accept like these people don't care. Yeah, so I do care. I love it. That's what the podcast's going to be about. I love hearing about it. I love doing it. But I think I didn't have it. I mean, we went to Israel a lot to visit my father's parents okay so even that can get in your bones of like this is it might have gotten in my bones for sure camping also i was like i don't know when i got into camping but i remember sleepaway camp we would do it once or twice every sleepaway camp is like go to the woods for the night it's just exposure but really what it was is um i just got a an inkling for it and i asked um my agent i was like get me some weird gigs i want to see the world i don't know where it came from before that got me 17 days in china and then i was just hooked not bad it's so foreign and i was <laughs> what'd you say about things that don't hold up <laughs> this episode is sponsored by trader joe's trader joe's we're not gonna re- rethink our fucking newsletter um yeah i love it i love being out there it's med- meditative also you you leave your your where you are and all the gossip and the dumb shit that's clouding you and it's just like it's just like free. My mind just wanders. Well, so also, don't you find one of the things I love about travel and having the kid? I'm like nerd because I won't be in. A, I'm like I won't be in Europe in a long don't time. Have a kid. Well, it's a little late now. <laughs> but you take the kid and then you travel with the kid. But anyways, you take the kid. You take the dad. You take them better, both. And there you have the family. Facts of life. <laughs> family ties. You should say full house. Um, well, the thing that's so fun about going to a foreign country is everything's different. Everything becomes interesting. It's like being on drugs. You're like, look at the street signs. The street the signs are a slightly weird. different font. The windows. Are, and mm-hmm. it's like when you're in New York, we have this because we live in a tourist city. You see people taking a photo and I always try to stop and be like, let me look at what they're, because it's like a fucking mailbox. Yeah. They're like, whoa. And I'm like, oh, let me look at this through their eyes. And I, maybe I've said this to you before too. Sometimes I'm driving up like the Merritt Parkway from New York to Massachusetts, and there's these beautiful trees, and you don't think anything. You're just driving, but I'm like, if I was in Austria, yeah, I would be like, look at these bushes. It's so, f- yeah. look at that. It's so full. The bridges sometimes are so ornate and stone. Yes. You go under, like, oh wow. You yeah. Just notice, I I did it once in a while with the Hollywood sign in L.A. where I was like, oh yeah. That's a massive, well-known thing, and I'm just passing by it every day. I think that's part of why I love travel is it puts you in the perspective of really taking things in because you're like, I might never be here again. Yeah, and you're of, staring at some statue that they all walk past every day. It's like, yes. oh, that was just some mailman. Speaking of crying, I cried when I first saw the Eiffel Tower. I was there with Louis. I was in Paris, and I went walking on my... I was like, I'm just, I got to go find it because everyone was sleeping in. And then I saw it, and it was because it was like, and I was by myself and, and jet lagged and all that shit. So there's more emotions. 
But you see it and you're like, there's that thing that I've seen since I was five. Pepper the Pew is there. I've just lived my life with that existing. And you're like, now I'm here. And you have this thing of you know what you were like and who you were as a boy, as a child, Hearing about scared it. shitless. And then now you're like, here I am at the Eiffel Tower. Here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. The Eiffel Tower is spectacular. And Didn't wait, go right, up it. What I love. What? Didn't go up it. You fucking I didn't idiot. want to wait in line. I was just looking to smoke cigarettes and drink coffee we did that too but it's beautiful i've been up there a couple times what's great about the eiffel tower is it's just a piece of art it yeah. serves no purpose yeah. it's a mon it's yeah. like a you told me before piece. i went i appreciate it on that level oh yeah you went recently and i went you couldn't a get year into ago the bookstore Fuck, i'm not gonna wait in the line for a bookstore no you some don't. of these things well we did that with pizza the other day we went to see uh white reaper first we uh we're like, let's go. This is a really good pizza place. I think Joe's. I was like, such a line. You're like, let's go to another pizza place that's going to yeah. be at 8.9 instead of a fucking 9.6, but no line. That was a great show. That was a great show. They fucking rule. Yeah, White Reaper's great. They shred. Um, yeah, yeah right. I love these moments. Duncan was telling about meditation. Oh, yeah, Duncan. I wanted to hear what Duncan He's was saying. He's pr- pretty big into it. You yes. Know, everyone tells me I got to have, everyone emails me and said, you got to have Duncan. I would say, I would agree with that. I'll get Duncan. Um, Great guy, oldest friend in show business. Hired wow. me, hired, trained me at the comedy store. The phones. No kidding. I've yeah. never met him. I've never been in the same room as him. Oh, Duncan rules. Oh, maybe when you go to do whatever, you should at least say hi or something. I don't Does know. You live in Texas. Lives in Austin now. Wow. Um, I think I'm doing Rogan. He was telling me. He was telling me about. Um, <laughs> Those days are over. <laughs> he was the worst guest of all time. Yeah. Well, I gave it my best shot. <laughs> Moved you to third chair for your next podcast. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is me on Rogan. That is crazy. Sometimes the comments are right. <laughs> um, if you tell him about meditation, just like clear, and I, he was like, "Do you do anything?" I was like, "Well, I'll occasionally like take an edible, and if I get like a daytime flight, I get a window seat. I just leave a notebook on my on my, and I just stare out the window as the scenery changes." And I just think, and if I get a thought, I'll just like write it down and then keep thinking. And he goes, you know what? That counts. That's about it. Meditative. That's about it. You're just thinking. Yeah. Clearing your brain, not thinking about anything particular. And he's like, yeah, sure. It's a form. Doug's a very positive guy. I guess it's a form. Yeah. I think recognizing a a thought as a thought is Mm -hmm. also a good thing. Like, oh, I'm lost in thought. It's a thought. It's what's hard is that with life, it's so much of like fear and anxiety is getting caught up in thought. Like it's just a thought is just passing by. It's like yeah. a, a cloud. I think it was helped me forgive people too. Is like that 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 thought of like, oh, I've been where they are. They they're just looking to say something shitty on Twitter. I've been there, um, so I'm just the butt of that now. Yeah. Uh, you can't. I mean, I wish they had, and I wish we were better friends. But like, I get it. And they'll just move on eventually, yeah. and um, it's hard. And there, there is no like it's another often to Sam Harris talking point. It's like there really is no free will. They're doing what it was already set. It was already set. Yeah, they yeah. just they can't control them yeah. themselves or whatever they are who they are. But I, it's uh, it can be hurtful. It can be hurtful. It hurts when a friend betrays you. Have you been betrayed? Yeah, I think a lot of times. Oh, jeez, me. Yeah, betray is a big, big word, but. But it yeah, it's just like wrong you, like, you know, publicly admonish you for stuff. But it's like, fuck you. But also, yeah. like, I get it. You're just like searching your own path. But it's like, we're better friends. I mean, like, I've had some of these like public outcries with you. But, but, but it, you're like, hey, I didn't like that. It's like, okay, no big deal. With me? Yeah, a long time ago. Public outcry? Yeah, you know, I get in trouble a lot. And you're like, hey, that wasn't cool. It wasn't public. That was probably no, you didn't go. Pu- I had a public outcry. Oh, and you're I see. like, hey, that was shitty. I'm saying this is the way to I handle see, it. I see. And I go, oh, well, let me explain it to you why it's not what you think. Right. And you're like, that I can handle. Right, right. And Kevin right. Iso talk about it. He goes, I hated you for one of those things. <laughs> the last thing I right. publicly say something about a comic. Yeah, well, yeah. That's why we're still friends, buddy. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've said this many places, but the idea of publicly criticizing another comedian is really it's wild that is it's not wild for, on the for menu like for a, me a, for <laughs> joking just, or for doing something to, like too much crowd work can you imagine yeah Whoa. i just think it's a little uh and i i feel like i don't know it's i, I, I have, have a very I've done like it too it's shitty 
I get it. I guess so. And maybe I have, maybe someone could be like, well, one time you said that. I'm but sure, I'm like, but you don't do it anymore. So it's like yeah. whatever. In fact, I don't think I ever did, frankly. But I, I just have that, like, I guess it's like a old, like, union mentality of like, what are you doing? And I shit on comics all day and hang. Yeah, you But hangs. the idea of being like, I'm going to let people know this joke is not cool. Like, I, I'm just like, what are you out of your fucking mind? What are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> like, That's crazy. Are you out of your mind? It just it's, seems. It's, it's so nuts. You think they wouldn't have said that about uh, uh, who's the first guy who got arrested all the time? Lenny Bruce? Yeah, they would have said that about him in the Twitter days. Oh, of oh I think it's funny. It's funny, but this guy is just offensive. <laughs> he would have gotten it constantly from fucking dumb fuck comics. Now, how much reverence do you have for those guys? Are you a guy that goes back and listens to Lenny Bruce records? Do you think no, about the, the people that paved the way? No, I just love the shit on them because I'm like, doesn't hold up, doesn't hold up, doesn't hold, not funny, not funny. Yeah, but some like, of it holds up. Some of it does. But I also like to put it in the context of what it was, you know? Right. So like the Fosberg flop is a good example. What's that mean? First guy to do the high jump backwards. Oh. And he got another like eight inches immediately. Right. He's not the record holder. Right. He got the record instantly by learning right. a new technique. So you got to put it in that context, you know? And so like when you see uh, Joan Rivers – doing mm -hmm. an abortion joke, and you realize this is in black and white. Right. It's like, this is so far ahead of its time that you're like, what? Like, no one was doing this shit then. And Lenny Bruce, same thing. Like, he's going to fucking jail for this, and he's not changing. Yeah, it's wild. I love that great story of him on trial, and they're just reading it, and he's like, well, you're not saying it right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's just like you're the not... Jews and the whatever, and he's like, wait, that's not what I You're said. writing on paper. It's like, I shot, I, I shot the cop. I shot the cop. Right. Remember that from, uh... no, I shot the... Sheriff? No, no, but no. I did no. not shoot no, no deputy. No, no, no. My I swear it wasn't self defense. Oh, my cousin Vinny. I shot the clerk. I he said, I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. <laughs> like, I don't remember that. He goes, because his deposition was like, I shot the clerk. Oh. What? I shot the clerk? Right, right. And he goes, right. and he said, I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. That's like when I did when Michael Richard had his incident at the Laugh Factory. Oh, can't take that off the fucking page. I was hey, he was really the first one. But I was in uh, Laugh. I was I lived in Boston, and like the Globe or something was doing like a thing about it, and they're like, "What did you think?" They wanted a quote from a comedian. I was like, "Oh, it was crazy. It was outrageous." And then they were like, Joe List is outraged. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, I was like, I'm not outraged. That was a great open was like, Stop, you guys. She's outraged. <laughs> She's making fun of the word. She's outraged. Guys, cameraman, stop laughing. She's outraged. <laughs> right. Boy, Patrice was great. What, hey, if you could bring back one comedian, which comedian would you bring back? I'd bring back Patrice because he'd such, be such a sellout now. He'd be such a fucking old guy who d doesn't have the fight in him left. Cause, and everybody's like, if Patrice is here, he'd handle it. If Howard Stern died when he was 40, we'd all be going, if Howard Stern was here, he'd be going right at these people saying this. And as you realize, everyone just gets older and gets lamer. I don't think Patrice would have. Yeah, we'll He's see. a comic. Yeah. But, but how do you feel about because you had a big beef with we shouldn't get off on a Howard Stern topic that's not no. really on point, I like but, I love how old Howard Stern he was but great. Uh, people now I never listened yeah. to Howard then I'll just yeah. keep it brief and now people are like he's like a sellout he's a fuckface he's he just corporate got old. He but just I got listen old. to his long form interviews and I'm like they're great they're great it's, but it's, maybe I think in the old days he would have been like what makes you come or whatever he also went at people he like really tried to uncover stuff now he's like giving asking them the questions that they tell them to ask right. Him. You know, yeah. it's almost like here are the questions for me. It, it's just like when people like bemoan a city changing or a neighborhood changing, it's like, well, anyone coming here now to New York is like, this place is amazing. But if you've been here for 15 years, you're like, it's not like what it was. Yeah, it's an interesting and that, thing. He was such a legend. And now it's like he's just a guy interviewing. It's interesting because I was thinking about that when I was contemplating having a child or not having a child. And you have this thing of like, and I still am terrified of the future and AI yeah. and climate change and war and drought and fucking famine and shit and jizz and TikTok. And I was talking to my buddy and I was like, well, you know, it's scary because like the climate change keeps getting warmer and hotter. And, and he's like, well, that's just what life will be to them. Like, it's like, right. yeah, it's not point. like they're like, what? Yeah. Like he goes, it's the same as when someone's like Coke used to be a nickel. I'm not like walking around being like, Fucking God, God damn this dollar fifty Coke. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah it's yeah. three dollars. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. He's like that'll just be reality. Is that like okay, a yeah. hurricane comes twice a year instead of once every two years? Yeah. And he said, well, dude, it's like it sounds so like harsh, but he's like, well, tell your kid he can kill himself anytime he wants. <laughs> and it's like. I know that sounds like whatever, but you're like, it is a good point. It's like he's alive. He gets to be alive. Right. Five is good. You know the antinatalists? No, what's that mean? Uh, they're against the idea of 
Uh, Rafael Nadal? With a T in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Robert Smith and the Cure is an antinatalist. You shouldn't be born. It's it's you're condemning humans to suffering. So how dare you do that to someone? But also you can't kill yourself because they worked it out mentally. Why you can't kill yourself? Well, I used to think similarly to that, but it's like there's also this the idea that th- this idea of like we can't we shouldn't have kids because the future is bleak. But you're like, but the future requires people, people yeah. to do a good job turning that around. So it's like, if you raise a child well. Everyone's so focused on the negative, and it's like, guys, things are great. It's like, you hear Bob Dylan sing about the same corruption that they're talking about now, and it's like, none of it changes, none of it's new. If I have to hear another, twenty, I can't wait for 2024, because 2023 couldn't be any worse. And then it was like, you said about 2022, and 21, and 20, and 19, I've been hearing it for 40 years. It's such a, it's some, become such a hack it's thing. So it started hacky. in like 2017 when a bunch of people died. I think like David Bowie and Prince. And yeah, it couldn't else be died. any worse. And it's like, really? Okay. You ever meet someone who had two similar surgeries on like one arm and then another or one knee than the other, but 10 years apart? And the second knee is far better off than the first knee because medical science oh, always yeah. keeps getting better. No, it keeps getting better. Root canals is like that. Colonoscopies is like that. Yeah, it's and like easy peasy. And you're like, shit, can't be any worse. It's like you're focusing on the wrong things. No, I think cancer will be knocked out and uh, Alzheimer's and stuff like that. We should be working on. The future is bright. Maybe. I have a through line on my whatever my next special will be, but it's focusing on positives. So like whatever it is, no matter what horrible thing, there's got to be one positive part of it. My my therapist told me this when I was depressed. Most yeah, depressed. He goes, what like good... What good can you can you get out of your depression? I was like, no, it's terrible. Because like, sure, sure, absolutely, but like, there's got to be a detail that's good. I'm like, well, my writing is now more like, like harsh and like interesting. So, there you go. Let's focus on that. So like, Trump. Let's just say you hated Trump. Yes. Um, is there any Billy Bass that you're in favor of? Is there anything like an affordable like a uh, medication bill? Is there anything? So if you just focus on like that, that's a good one. Right. Mentally, you're just in a way better spot. You know, yeah. traffic sucky. He was like, well, I could listen to more uh, classic Stern. Right. Well, Trump, he got more people to vote than ever voted in the history okay. of voting. Okay, great. He, he made people now focus on, like, I'm going to call my politicians on their dumb shit. Right. Well, that's the thing, too. I mean, that's, like, a big part of gratitude, is, it feels like what we're talking about, which is the anecdote to depression and even anxiety. And it's always, and that's what, like, um, they talk about, the like, antidote negative, or the anecdote? I don't know which one's right. Like, antidote. I actually learned these are two different words on this podcast oh, with Katie Hannigan. I think you meant antidote. When you said it, I was like, what's the antidote? antidote. You're yeah. about to like yes, the quote antidote. for me. <laughs> Literally on the episode, I think it was like the fifth episode with, with Katie Hannigan. I was like, some people say it different. And she's like, those are two different words. <laughs> and in real time, I learned two different, different words. <laughs> antidote to depression anxiety is gratitude and negative visualization. You ever do that? That's a, a, a really helpful exercise that like the Stoics do is like, Imagine right now that like your boyfriend is dead, Mm -hmm. died this morning, and you're like scrambling to be like, okay, I gotta call his mother, I gotta call his father, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta funeral, I gotta do all this stuff, and then you just take a moment, you're like, totally not dead. What what you can give now to not have that, and it's like, okay, you got it, you got it, wow, and totally like, I do it with something like raining. Sometimes I'm walking around, I'm literally like, it's not raining right now. It would be a bummer if it was raining and I was wet. Yeah, or if it's like right, you're late for whatever, and you're like, it's not winter. I'm I'm late, but I'm out now. It's like this is everyone's out. The chicks have mini skirts everywhere. It's such a nice time. Yeah, it's a really powerful thing. I I, with flights when you take off, you're like that could have been delayed three hours. My flight is great. Yeah. Or I get upgraded. I'm like I could be in a middle seat in the back or whatever it is. This is great saying in um in Spanish. It's a if instead of you're welcome. Yeah. (laughs) It's uh no pasa nada. They also have welcome, but no pasa nada means nothing passed. Hmm. We're like hey, thanks for taking this you just go like it didn't happen i just love that term <laughs> it's right. like don't even think about it it did not even happen well do you find this like sometimes i have a hard time like i we just went out to mark's you couldn't make it but mark had his wife through the celebration at the pool out in twa and you're driving and you're like i'm in traffic i'm like this is fucking gay i'm in sitting in traffic it's annoying my car this whole thing and then as soon as you park it is completely erased. And you're like, this hotel is great. And then you're like, hey, Marcus. Yeah. 
It's so funny. So it's hard to remember sometimes you're in traffic being like, this will end and I'll feel great. I just I recently in the moment I, I came up with this where somebody's like, oh, fuck, they were having some bad thing. And I was and I was like sort of involved with it too. It was going to be bad for me too. I forget what it was. But, but it was worse for them. And I go, well, this is going to be a memory soon. Right, right. And it's like, what do you mean? It's like, you're not gonna. It's just, a, it's going to be a memory in yeah. almost in a couple of days. This too shall pass. Yeah, and so it's like, I don't know. Just get there right now, mentally. Just get there right now. Yeah, I know it sucks. Your flight got delayed again, but like, it's gonna be a fun story on a podcast in like a week. No, it's a fun exercise. It's another thing Sam Harris talks about. This man's my father. He's like, see if today for the whole day, make a note to yourself. Try to turn sure, down the volume. Everything you get upset about or that annoys you, just try to turn it down like 50% and just see if you can do it. Just consciously, the train's late and you're like, what the fuck? You're just like, ah, oh. oh, what the fuck? Yeah. You know? Because you know there's two people that are just as late for just as meaningful thing to them and one is more upset than the other. They right. can't be equally upset. So it's like, can't you be the guy who's less upset? Yeah. It's like a... Well, and that's where that negative visualization comes. Yeah. It's like, I could be on my way to the hospital to get a CAT scan right now because they found a lump in my asshole. And instead, I'm on a way to podcast. Louis told a story on my storytelling show about uh, going to the Ukraine or wanting to go to the Ukraine. Yeah. And uh, talking about how cool it would have been and whatever and how and, and how he was like going to be like, hey, there's a war. It seems like it's breaking out. It was before it really broke out. Yeah. And how more and more flights were getting canceled and he was like all right and even LL was like we're not going he goes fuck that's bad news yeah and then eventually and he calls the guys like i don't i think we might have to pull out uh, and the guy's like i'll be ruined if you pull out like i put all my money into promoting this you yeah. can't pull out is before the war broke out right like days before yeah and so but but it's not like hey it's coming on thursday it's like they, right, it right. might not happen it might not happen you know it's just like yeah. And the guy's like, don't, dude. And he's like, Fuck, all right. So now I feel bad for this guy. I can't pull out. And then eventually only government planes are going, but only to get people out. No one's going in. And eventually he's got to call the guy. He was like, dude, I'm really sorry. I can't do I literally can't get in there. And the guy's like, oh, I fled like two days ago. <laughs> and he was like, what? He goes, oh, yeah, I barely got my family out. That's that thing of like, you think I give a fuck about the money I put yeah, in yeah. this thing now? I got my wife and my kid, two out of the three kids out of there. And, and, and I'm just fucking stoked. Yeah, it's hard. It's a weird. Th this is like another exercise that I've, I've heard and I can't keep saying his Going name. Going to see but a movie and you're like, remember when we didn't think it was going to happen? Don't forget it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But sometimes you think, you look at the stuff in your house, all these things that you love, and you're like, these are all just borrowed items. At some point, these are your prized possessions. At some point, somebody will be, My you'll junk, be dead, and they'll junk. be like, what do I do with yeah, this? Do you want to take this? Joke. Yeah. You, you want to take this? Do you guys want yeah. Ari's book? He's dead. It's just all on loan. Yeah. You know, I was looking at, uh, if you like stop and think about it too, like where I got this, I barely ever think about it, but I'm thinking about it now. Is it a kiosk in the Wheaton Mall? Wheaton, Wheaton Plaza Mall. Wheaton, Maryland? Mm-hmm. And just like going through, it was like, cool, and saving up money is probably $17. I was like, oof, that's You've a had lot that of for money. that long? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And like, I they don't make butt ice anymore. No. <laughs> Remember the whole campaign? Yeah, doobie, 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 doobie. The call is coming from inside the house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like, and now I'm remembering, I'm like, what a, it just brings me back, but you kind of forget it. The brand new car, like, you got that at a concert, I assume? Yes. And so like, I'm sure most of the time you don't think about that specific context, like con right. when you put it on. But if you do, it's pretty cool. We went. I went over all my Ecuador pictures in order, flipping through the Fun. whole thing. And man, it was like 40 minutes and it just took me back through the whole thing. You you showed up for yeah. a little bit of it. That was great. Um, That's why I take a lot of photos. I always say this, it's like, I'm not taking photos to post, although I like posting photos. It's like you post them so you can look at them later and be like, oh, yeah, the hotel had those cool fucking weird uh, pillows. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, like, because it's just a memory enhancer. Because yeah. you're like, oh, I never would have thought of that hallway again. And then you see the photo and you're like, I can smell that carpet. You can smell it. Yeah, which is you the, the sense you stay. closest tied to memory. Yeah, yeah. And That's it funny. just brings you back. And it's just like, I guess that'll help with. Like you say, gratitude of like remembering this cool thing. Yeah. Which is what a souvenir should do. I'm so grateful I went. God damn. Most people dude, didn't go. That was fucking great. Yeah. Everybody talked about it. You and Sa were the only ones that fucking went. And what a perfect time. We had just done a bunch of ayahuasca, so we couldn't drink. Oh, yeah. Days. So it's like perfect. I had horrible shits. I almost I died horrible out shits. there. It was um, horrible. Sarah had shits on the hike. We got to do another episode. And I'll have both of you guys in. Oh, that'd be great. Talk well, just about that. We'll have free time with our baby. Oh, yeah. Will That's you right. see the baby? Will you come over? I will. 
I've come to terms oh, with me not wanting kids is is not as everyone else's. So now I'm like, this is great. This is really cool for you. Yeah. Well, you don't like you like to poo poo everything everybody comes up with, but yeah. Christine Evans said it to me once. It was I think a young James was at a, a, a Wayne Rada party. Yeah. And I was like, uh. she was like, Ari, we get it. You can still enjoy the cuteness of a child. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh damn, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah, because you seem like this free spirit guy but really you're quite closed off in some areas have you ever a lot of areas. Of that? have yeah, you considered yeah. that no i try to challenge those things yeah you're just like that's no i would never have a kid that's stupid because i won't have any freedom you're afraid of uh, commitment well i was afraid it's also like i want to make sure to lock my door so no one breaks it <laughs> it's like it's not afraid it's like i've thought it through and i'm like i don't want that yeah you're afraid you're yeah. afraid to feel that kind of love and vulnerability that's why you're so you're so joking. <laughs> I, I don't think that's, that's why what you're it so is. joking. I don't think that's what it is. Why you, I do I do I don't like vulnerability or like uh, realness. Sometimes you always make a joke to like sidetrack it, but like yeah, something's it's up not there. that kid thing is not the kid thing is like no no I want a life that you can't have when you have like but you can't like have anger this kind of life. Yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah, so it's like I choose this one. Yeah, well, I think you'd be good. Now Everyone says late. that. Everyone's like, you'd be a good father. I'm like, I'd be a good fucking. A homeowner I don't want to be to, stuck I used to do this bit yeah I'd be I a good a bit car like owner it's still got to move my car every Tuesday and Thursday I people always say I used to do a joke people like you should have kids you'd be a great dad and you're like well, that doesn't mean I want to be a dad yeah what's that have to do with I'd that? be great at ripping tickets at the movie theater but I don't really feel like <laughs> yeah doing I'll that. do a great job I'm like I'd also be amazing at sucking dick but I'd rather not do that <laughs> dude we're big daddy Kane goes some of you all some of you all have money I'm sitting in the owner's box at Forest Hills and I'm like that's probably us <laughs> Amelia got the hook up and then he goes but maybe you don't. Maybe you flipping burgers. Maybe you making sandwiches for a living. Sitting right next to Joe DeRosa. And if you making sandwiches for a living, <laughs> it was so great. And I'm like, he goes, you make the best goddamn sandwiches you can make. And eventually one day, you have your own sandwich place. And I'm like, Joe, this that's is great. unbelievable. He was like, what? That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, all right, we got we to gotta wrap it up. We're over time because we went to We Might Be Drunk before yeah. this. Well, we got the time. studio for a little while. But the deal is, guys, very rarely... Does a comedian get to put out something that he that he is start to finish what he wants to do? It's a rare yeah. thing. It used to be when we started. I started probably forty years before you, but uh, be sure forty. Do it. Be, be sure to do it. I think we started at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm embarrassed to say. But the best you could do is a sitcom and maybe maybe a movie and be like, oh, that's so cool. But what you really want to do is your own stand up comedy special. No rules, just you, microphone, and a fucking stool. And when these comics do it on their own terms, like Joe List does right now for uh, Take Me Back to the Ball Game on YouTube right now. What is it? Enough for everybody? Enough for everybody on YouTube right now. What you're seeing is... Not a, right now, tomorrow. Or tomorrow, right now, depending on when you're a seeing A pure it. expression of his artistic endeavors. So go watch it, leave a comment, throw him a couple ducats on there, and he can do it again. He keeps doing it, so yeah, I can support it. Thank you. This is the you third You might be wrong years. about it. Now, what is it? Everybody wants some. Everybody wants some. Enough for enough, everybody. Enough for everybody right now. And third then, one in three years, and I'm very proud of it. It's crazy. And, so and, 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 please watch and, and, it. And Lou is doing this. It was nuts. But you're at a high level. It's fucking awesome. And so fucking good. You know, all the... All, all any artist wants, I saw, I hate saying that about comic, but all they want is for their thing to be seen. So if you make a painting, it's like, can I just get it in some gallery? It's a coffee shop. Fucking put it out. At least someone will see it. So that's why we're living in great times right now. Yeah, see it, subscribe. It'll be on this channel tomorrow night. You can watch it live. You can watch it whenever you're seeing this. Yeah. And uh, subscribe to this podcast. And uh, where, where do they find you? AriShafir.com? You can, after you're watching his special, you can watch mine, AriShafir.com. Uh, that special is amazing. Quick tour date, second show in Chicago. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. From comics, I love it. Uh, Minneapolis, Madison, Kansas City, Louisville, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Boston in February, Joe's hometown, uh, Parks Casino at the end of October. Uh, all Maybe those dates are already Maybe I'll come up to Boston. What are you doing? Oh, I got all my toll tours in November. No, February, I said. You're in Boston. Yeah, February. So what? Maybe I'll come up. Oh, yeah. You doing the garden? Yeah, I'm doing the... <laughs> What are you doing, the Wilbur? <laughs> yeah, doing the Wilbur. Yeah, I sold that Second out. show I had it. I opened for you there years ago. I know, it's so my own crazy. Show there. That was exciting. It I, was one of the best intros I got to do. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was right after the Louis stuff happened. And I was like, you know, Joe's been opening for Louis this whole time. And for some reason, his schedule became available. <laughs> We're lucky funny. to have him. Wow, that was, that, that was like six years ago. It was, it's interesting. That's perspective. Six years ago, I was lucky to get you then. You would slip through the cracks. Yeah. But like... 
opening for me at the Wilbur and then selling out the Wilbur. Yeah, and then we did Providence, and I just sold out five shows there. Well, one of them I didn't sell out, but close enough. I sold a thousand tickets there. Wow! So that was exciting. And I also I've said this before publicly, and I want to say it again. You're an underrated comedian. People think of you as podcast guy, prankster guy, whatever. Ari's crazy. Obviously, they know you're a comic, but don't get talked about enough. Thanks. Great, great I wish, comedian. I, I wish people would talk more about my stand. Well, it's because you have so many antics. Fun. You're shirtless. Yeah. You're throwing piss in people's faces. Yeah. And obviously, people know you're a great comic. They come and see you. You sell tickets all over. Six million people died in the Holocaust and watch your <laughs> Dude, podcast. So that this could get made. Yeah. But I feel like it's not talked about enough. People say Shane and, and Mark and um, this popular whoever the podcast, fuck, comics Sam. Too. It's popular to talk about certain people, and then it's, it's not popular to talk about others. Yeah. Anyways, anyway, I appreciate. I do comic. appreciate it. when a comic says that. I love it. Great comic, great friend. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We're subscribe. doing new episodes every week. And but and, and last last thing, watch the podcast. This podcast. Listen to it when there's people you don't know. We're having great conversations. It's like people are like, "Oh, Ari's on. I'll check it out." Yeah. Watch the ones with people. Just because you haven't heard of them doesn't mean let they're this not be great. an entryway into a right. Uh, the the I say the seven eight year comics are the best comics in the world generally pound for pound. They're the hungriest and the fucking sharpest. And then they start fading off one by one as you get bigger and more successful and, right. and more famous. The, the podcasters have nothing to say. You don't know them. They're going to have the best episodes. Great stories. Interesting. So yeah. that's it. Thank you.